All right, and we are back with another episode of the Game Loon Saloon. And today is a very special week because this morning aired, or well, I don't know if it was this morning, but anyway, the last episode of Boba Fett aired. So today, we're just going to get that right into that first. And of course, before we begin, I want to thank everyone for watching, right? Um, this will be available with, you know, where all pa podcasts are available. So listen if you want to. And also, this one will be hopefully on YouTube and video form. And of course, as always, we have my good friend and co-host, Carlos Rivas. What's up, everybody? Happy to be back. Happy to talk all things we love. And like like he said, I'm ready to talk Boba Fett because wow, wow, <laughs> what okay. a finale! What a, what a season! Yes, I. It felt like okay. So when 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 Carlos first recommended to me, I didn't start watching till three days ago or two days ago. I started this week to this week watching it right. Which I think, um, in hindsight, um, watching it probably was the best viewing experience yes um because it, it, it's crazy it the uh, boba fett took me for a ride um like i had said on previous episodes um sometimes i don't expect the best even though i'm gonna i know i'm gonna enjoy it i don't expect the best out of a show but the book of boba fett um another star wars show after the mandalorian i was not excited i yes. just wasn't um, I like Boba Fett as a character. I like playing with him in the games. I think he's iconic. He's great and everything. I just didn't see the point of a season of a show with Boba Fett. Yeah. Um, I thought his inclusion in Mandalorian season two was amazing and enough. I thought that's all I needed. Yeah, me too. I was wrong. I me was too. just severely wrong. And I, I just want to send out an apology to Dave Filoni and John Favreau. <laughs> just do what you want. Yeah. Because clearly I want it. It's. I mean, okay. So, like I said, I, I, I just started this show this week, right? And I did, I did, when I was watching the show, I took a bit of like a, a kind of an analytical point of view, right? Because I did see some of the talk around like Reddit. I saw some talk of it. I saw some talk of it on Twitter, right? Twitter especially was really kind of silent on the show until that final, those, I would say that, that, that last episode before this one. Probably like the last three, I would say. The yeah. last three just really ignited like, okay, what's going on Exactly. Here? Like that's the when I really started to hear about it. They wanted to hyperdrive. And it's just exactly. Like, what's Everywhere going on? I went, people were talking about Boba Fett. But at the same time, I wanted to see, look, maybe understand why people were so kind of lukewarm on it for like the first few episodes. But for the life of me, I couldn't personally understand why, right? Because, okay, first, I would say the first couple episodes were perfect setup, right? Because one of the things I was very, like, uh, hesitant about is the fact that um, the actor who plays Boba Fett, he was kind of older, you know, an older man. Yeah. And could he be the leading man in a story, right? And could it, are they smart enough to know what type of story that Boba Fett would be able would be able to shine in, and we would still be able to keep that keep that same sort of mystique about him. Like for us Star Wars fans, Boba Fett is a legend, right? He's, he's, he's mythical. He's a mythical legend. He's the bounty hunter of all bounty hunters. Exactly. Like you said, he the actor's older, but so how do we keep that mystique of what we read in all these books and all these comics of this this just badass bounty hunter exactly. in the form uh in a man who maybe not be able to portray that i think like you said they did it perfectly in mm -hmm. the type of story they told um it wasn't limiting in any way it just yeah. showed where boba is today. today and that's probably one of the biggest things i was scared of um going into the show i was like well okay we've had this iconic character um but then we have this new character in mandalorian and a new actor pedro pascal um, younger, um, just this new crop of actors that are resurging into into Star Wars. I was like, that's what I want to see. I just want to see new characters. So Boba Fett, you go back. He's an older character. He's old. He's an older actor. I mean, what more can we do? But it really did show his backstory and the setup in those first four episodes. It was great. Uh, yeah. Just 
seeing you never want to go back I, I think every star wars fan at this point um the ones that are really taking in all the new stuff we want new stuff yep exactly um we can't keep remaking Sky a new Walker. hope and 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 <laughs> yeah and and emperor strikes and the empire strikes back we can't keep remaking the same story exactly um and being told to just enjoy it um exactly that's that's insane but with Boba Fett, it's like we're getting this whole new history of Tatooine, a planet we've been on seven billion times. times. But now I, I'm knowing more about. I care about Tusken Raiders, right? I was I was actually like on their side for a second, and the show did that. They were able to do that in those first four episodes. It really set up the world we're in right now, post Empire, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, man. I'm. I was really stunned. Like, for example. I was I always loved sort of the mysticism of Star Wars, right? And that mostly comes from like the movie. There there was that war element, right? But you know, the main kind of like the overall focus has always been the the Jedi's, right? Right. So this kind of we, we saw it to some extent on The Mandalorian, but this time it's more focused, right? Because on The Mandalorian, we went through a lot of different places, a lot of different planets, but t- with Tatooine, it was a label it was able to do a lot of a lot of environmental storytelling, right? Absolutely. We saw we saw the the conflict like in in terms of uh economy, the different factions there, the different people there, what they're going through, how they how they survive every day, little interaction with Boba Fett, especially now since he's kind of like uh, a crime lord. A crime lord, a, a don, uh a uh, mafioso, uh, uh, <laughs> mafioso type. Yeah, like the leader of this territory. We, and like you said, dif- the different environments. You have the cities, the Mos Espa and Mos Eisley and all the mosses where um, they're they're heavy in trade. And then you have the the side towns in the in the sands that nobody thinks about mm-hmm. um, what's going on there. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's all the same planet. Um, Tatooine. Tatooine. Uh, Which I would say was almost like, because the first couple of episodes i was like okay is this all gonna be on tatooine and i was worried because i like anakin i hate sand <laughs> at the, at, yes um uh, if i never see tatooine again i'll be fine um Me too. Uh, or, or 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 a sand planet I, I get it it's beautiful but um yeah i, I it. wanted to be proven wrong because like I, well i'm glad i was proven wrong absolutely because i didn't want to go back to tatooine because like it's it's this this air is like really Tatooine? Is that the only planet in the fucking galaxy? Exactly. <laughs> it, there's more out there. Exactly. We see it every time. But I like how they they recognize that. I'm sure they did. But they they wanted to say, okay, Tatooine has a lot of stories to tell, but it's 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 about the people, right? right. And how can we tell this story through Boba Fett's kind of personal journey? Right. And we want to see, you know, there the everything uh, with Star Wars. Star Wars, it's crime, it's it's the war aspect of it, but there's other things. Mm-hmm. I mean, what we saw was crime here, yeah. uh, spice. We, f- I feel like this is the first time we're just really acknowledging spice is drugs. That's what we've been yeah. saying this yeah. whole time. I mean, they've been saying it from the beginning, spice, moving spice. They're always alluding to it, but this time it just felt like, yeah, no, this is a show about people trying to move drugs <laughs> through this desert planet and no we don't want these drugs in our system Mm -hmm. they have they say spies that's their what they call it um they're they're slaying for it it's it it, at the end of the day it's a disney plus show but yeah i mean these these are drug runners that boba fett is going against and uh, that episode where he shows the tuscan raiders how to ride the motorbikes to infiltrate the and to the spice train uh, with the pike syndicate how it, it doesn't get more drug dealer than that. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't even say it any other way. I mean, I love my, my mysticism and my fantasy, but Me at too. the end of the day, I like a good drug story too. Yeah. And it, it's ultimately what it was. It's a hijack. Um, it's, it's crime. It's, it's a Western, um, all in one. And the Western aspects of the season, which is so, so good. Well done. Uh, so well, like gunslinging to lots of gunslinging, lots of gunslinging and to like its finest point. I, I was the first four episodes. I think they were slow. Yeah. Um, definitely. in pacing. Cause um, they were jumping back and forth. Yeah. It's two timelines that can always get a little bit tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, and and both timelines, same location. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he looks exactly the same. So I mean, yeah. might as well, it could have been the same timeline it, if you're not I paying didn't attention. I realize it had been years till he mentioned it. 
Yeah, I thought it was like weeks. Yeah, me too. To me, it felt like weeks. All those years. Shit, it's been years? <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's not really a... Um, you can't really see the passage of time. Yeah, He's exactly. already older and um, Tatooine doesn't look any different. Exactly. It, it, you don't see the, the demolition of Tatooine in any form. But um, yeah, it's years that he was out of the um, out of the pit. It's been it's been a while. I think it's uh, what has it been in Mandalorian starts six to seven years after Return of the Jedi. I could be wrong there, but, it, you know, it's been it like you said, years. So. The first four episodes, albeit slow, I think it was, um, like you said, good groundwork. Yes. To just really do a home run at the end. They really did. And one thing I did want to point out, the Pikes. Great great <laughs> addition to um, Star Wars Aliens. Yeah. They look so dope. I was so happy to finally see an aquatic um, alien that wasn't... General Akbar and his homies. <laughs> Finally, yes. Let's. There's oh, the, uh, there's the other pikes designs. Are the the one the ones that were selling the the, the ones. That yeah, were yeah. Ahead. The the ones that were in, in those cool masks. That, oh yeah. And, and then yeah. underneath they they look like fish to me. Yeah. They, um, I thought they were fish. Yeah, um, they, they were fish. Um. Yeah, I'll call them. I'm I'm gonna call them fish. They looked so dope. Small head people. Um. So 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 dope. Um. They felt intimidating. Yeah. Um. It felt like it, it finally felt good to see like a good new villain, um, mm-hmm. instead of the usual um, ones we see. As yeah, these are the bad aliens. It, it was a good addition, I think, in terms of adding to Star Wars lore. Yes. Oh my goodness. One thing I definitely wanted to talk about, give credit to, right, is because when I first started this show, um, like I said, I was worried about the the actor as a leading guy. One thing I have to give credit to is how they handled him in certain scenarios, right. Because obviously it's 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 a it's a story about crimes and drugs, a crime lord, right? Right. So one thing that you have to acknowledge that he's gonna take certain actions morally that you know normal people wouldn't necessarily agree with, right? Right. They showed like it was a perfect way of showing that yes, he's a dude that's willing to murder somebody, but there's an under uh like an undertone of honor to everything that he does. He has his honor code. He's I love he's it. Not going to just kill to kill for killing's sake mm-hmm. um and but i do like the distinction that he's not it's not the mandalorian's way it's exactly. boba fett's way it's boba fett. it, 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 he doesn't um align himself to any creed to any group as it's what's right and what's not right yeah especially since he kept taking off his mask <laughs> yeah i mean that's you know what i i like it yeah. i, I want to see the actor i want to see what he does um Without the helmet, and every time he puts it back on, it's just so imposing. Yeah, when he's talking to people and he puts it back on because he knows it's time for business. I love to see it. <laughs> oh my god! When I was when I was watching it, I think it was episode three. I think when the Wookiee showed up, bro. Yes, like, yes. What the um, hell? That freaked me out. Yes, uh, that um, I thought he was having a dream. At you know, first, I, I, thought- <laughs> I, I, I thought so too because, and I want to get his name. It's a little bit hard of a name. To pronounce, but I mean, yeah. what Wookiee isn't? Um, <laughs> I thought it was. I keep thinking uh, Santo. Santo oh. was like is is either his first name or or something like that because that's what he calls him mm-hmm. uh, multiple times. But uh, Chrysanthemum. That is the, yeah. Chrysanthemum is the name of the Wookiee. Um, I want to see a bad Wookiee. Every yeah. time we see Wookies, they're pretty much humble people, good, good people. I mean, they're, they're powerful, nice. but this guy was laced up with spikes. Um. I just, gladiator, he uh, yeah, a gla- a, a true gladiator. Um, the dark fur, everything about his design was just menacing. Amazing. And, and when he pulls them out of the back, back the tank to just completely mess him up, <laughs> just so good. Um, and then that was the other thing, the palace. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to see a show at Java's palace. I, like we said before, I'm kind of over all these set pieces that we've yeah. seen before. But I don't know, something about it just felt right. And good, and eventually near the end of the season, they they decide there's a point where they have an option to go to the palace to to, to wait for the attack. And Boba decides at the um, heeding the word of some of his um, mercenaries, no, we got to stay in the in with the people, yeah, in the streets, and that's what they do. And that's what I think I like. Yeah, I, I think eventually he would probably even knock down the palace just to be amongst the people. Mm-hmm. Um, I can believe that. And that was another thing that was so impressive with the show. Um, I didn't find any characters, you know, any supporting characters too annoying. 
Um, Melinda May as uh, Melinda May. That is not her name. Ming Na Wen. Ming Na Wen. <laughs> Melinda May uh, from Ages of Shield. <laughs> Ming Na Wen. Um, as Fennec Shan, I thought she did great. She was um, exactly what she needed to be an yeah. imposing number two. Um, in and out. There was a point in the finale. I was like, wait, wait, where is she? And then she just comes up and just yeah. k- kills a bunch of people. Great. This is what exactly what I want to see. <laughs> um, the guards that they had, um, the the two piglet guards, the green, yeah, um, the, the uh, green piggies, the orc looking guys, whatever they are, Galmorians or something like and that, and the little short shorts. That was fun to watch. <laughs> um, uh, the 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 modified, I guess teenagers, hoodlums, yeah. whatever you want to call them. That was pretty cool. I hadn't I hadn't seen too much I, of. They almost look like they're from a different series. They they did look distinctly different than Star Wars. Yeah. And distinctly different than what was happening on that planet. But if that's the direction that maybe the planet was taking or maybe the youth is taking, I mean, they look I like a bunch it. of punk rock kids. Yeah. And it, was, it was a great way to convey like the different types of populations. Right. And just to see people just like openly, I mean, why wouldn't you with all this technology, all these droids, the idea, and we've seen it before with obviously Luke has his robotic hand. Yeah. Um, Anakin had his robotic pretty much arm. Um, Darth Maul has his uh, robotic half in the Clone <laughs> Wars. We know that people are modifying themselves with droids, but th- this just felt like. We're gonna go dive full deep into this, yeah. and I appreciated it. I, I I I enjoyed it. Yeah, a new aspect that makes to me makes the Star Wars world more interesting, richer. Because right? like from the movies, you you really because obviously there's two two hours and a half at most. Sometimes you really only get a lot of surface level stuff, right? Right. It, it's when it, when it comes to the details, the like on the ground fighting, right? Like the little the little aspects is where I think series like. Uh, Boba Fett really shines right when he first went there to talk to them about you know stealing from that guy he was uh he was talking to right he was the, the, uh, water, uh, guy. the, the water farmer yeah and the fact that he went and, and he talked to them like they were showing him a little disrespect but he right. was like I'm a guy who's who's seen he's seen tons of shit he knows how kids act right he's not gonna overreact to anything right the, the word that the thing I kept thinking in my mind the, the, the phrase I kept thinking in my Boba Fett has adult sensibilities, yes. which I like about him, right? Yes, absolutely. He, he doesn't do things in an irrational fashion or like when things approach him, he doesn't immediately go to like, hey, I'm going to kill somebody. No, he, he looks for alternative solutions and it really goes to show how smart of a character he is. The first thing he does when he meets them, he said, hey, let me, you know, he talks to them. Finds out the situation and he handles the situation in a particularly Boba Fett way. Right. He's calculated. He's matured. Um. He's gonna. He's not. He's not a hired gun. Exactly. He's not just the bounty hunter. He's the bounty hunter that has outlived other bounty hunters for X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Um. That was. It was super great to watch him interact with other characters. But I think now let's talk about the shift because at, once we get to episodes five, six, and seven, five. it just. It just completely shifts yeah. in the fact that it's basically Mandalorian, Mandalorian. season two point five. Yeah, um, that's all I saw. I mean, in it was it was funny. I saw a joke uh, uh, online that said um, in the season finale, Boba Fett was going to make a cameo because <laughs> he was just so missing from episodes uh, five and six. We but, didn't see him till the finale, really, right? I think he's like... In, well, he's there sprinkled. Yeah, he's literally there probably for one scene in both episodes five and six. Yeah. But you're really following Mando, Mando. and you're following um, Grogu, Grogu. Um, which I just wasn't expecting. Me neither. None of this Not was... Not to this extent. No, no, no. I thought when the episode started, episode five, the one where we're primarily with Mando... Um, slicing up people in that yeah, factory or whatever. I thought... I thought that was going to be it. He was going to be in the episode for 10 minutes and we'd go back to Tatooine. And that just was not the case. It was the whole episode. Uh, I can't, I, I can't say I'm mad. Me <laughs> I can't. Cause that's what I kept saying. I was like, I want more Mandalorian. Give me season three already. Oh, well you kind of, you kind of sedated me. You kind of, um, uh, gave me my little fix before season three comes out, but it all made sense. It was yes, all it for a greater storyline that wrapped up at the end. Um, 
that spaceship world that they were on mm-hmm. um that was basically like a circle and he's in a club yeah it's the it, halo ring the yes amazing yeah. that looked so real so uh it, it honestly seeing him being able to see the other side it freaked me out yeah with my fear of heights i was like oh no i, I would not that. be able to i would not be able to be on this ship yeah but everything about the design was so good it was so good to see mando again seeing him with the the armorer and with the other um mandalorian, mandalorian um that he fought it was just everything i wanted yeah Oh, and he finally admitted to her that, you know, he had taken off his mask. Right. You know, sometimes I forget how deeply, deeply important it is to them. It is their religious foundation, their weapons and armor. And when he said, like, he sounded so heartbroken. He sounded so disappointed. Like I was he, like, wait, wait, just just tell her no you didn't take off. Just tell her no. Just, just tell her no. And he, <sighs> just lie. But that's not the way. Exactly. That is not that the is way. Not the way. <laughs> this is the that's way. not the way. This is the way. <laughs> Admitting your faults. Mm-hmm. And he's such a stand-up character. And all he cares about is this little guy that he took care of for so long. That was um, so sweet. Wanting to get him back. I mean, he could have made any other type of. Um, defensive wear with the with the best car, mm-hmm. but he makes a chain link shirt for him. I mean, it's just so endearing. Yeah, I mean, we got two seasons of them connecting, and to see, yeah, this is what's gonna happen. He's gonna care about this character. Yeah, it was so good to see. It was so refreshing. Um, to have him back on on our screens, I loved it. Um, I would go as far as to say, besides Obi Wan Kenobi and Anakin, this is the best relationship Star Wars has ever done. Yeah, um, on screen, anyways. Yeah, I think I think so too. Um, I think the closest thing we have is to is the relationship with the droids. I mean, you just when you see R two, you just expect to see. Yeah, oh yeah, that's you true. You expect to see somebody with him when you C three PO. Oh, when you see C three PO when you and even BBA. The one of the best things about um the new mm-hmm. trilogy, um, he was a delight, but this just felt different. Yeah, and and. Once we get to episode six, minds are blown. Yeah. Listen. Anakin. Uh, Anakin. Luke. Luke. So, you know what I'll say? The CGI looked even better than the last episode of the The last CGI season. was so much was better no than last season. Valley. It was absolutely breathtaking. Now, <laughs> uh, we get to this planet. We get to this planet and we... Beautiful, by the way. Beautiful planet. Um different scenery than a lot of other planets so i was like happy to see a different kind of planet one yep. but then two i was like okay obviously he's come to see grogu but we're not gonna see luke not again they can't do it they're not they're <laughs> not. and they just drop luke skywalker for 20 minutes listen i agree with you we need to move on from the skywalkers but th- i feel like this is how you do it right of course and, and, and as a side character exactly helping out the character that we want to see evolve. We're we're seeing him go into that mentor role, that Obi Wan role for Grogu, and ultimately give him the choice. And and from the finale, uh, we might not see more of him, which I'm yeah, okay with because we got enough. The CGI was so good. Um, you couldn't convince me that wasn't Mark Hamill. Yeah, right. It's just uh. <laughs> The 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 CGI from from Mandalorian, yeah, obviously there were some points where when he talked, it looked a little bit off. Yeah, he had full speech, and that was it just scary. looked incredible. You know what's the scary part? What I read that that is not th- th- nobody voice acted that. That was not Mark Hamill. Really? That's all from archival footage. What? So like the Unreal Engine. They typed in what he needed to say, and it spit it back out. That's not Mark Hamill's voice. What? The, what? Okay, it's, now that's that. That's is a scary. recreation. That's scary. No one. Vo- it's the oh, machine. That's unfucking believable. I I think somebody had to be there in, in in order to like put over the face, but man, Jesus Christ! They don't even need Mark Hamill. <laughs> 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 just as a just just as a courtesy, but man, damn, it was so real. Yeah, it just it just was. I kept trying to look at his face to look to get that like 
let me try to find the mistakes or because like you you want to find the mistake exactly, yeah you want to eventually like, your eyes perfect. always sees like an awkward movement or something yeah. like that like the Leia one from like Rogue Story that one could kind of kind of like uh could get a little su- suspicious yeah on certain angles you know, the first Luke Skywalker of course that was another one of like the old guy I forgot his um name. yes the general from the Empire yes in him, Rogue One it as was well a little like uncanny valley but this one like you if that was an Luke Skywalker. Like I would a hundred percent believe you. It was 100%. that amazing. If especially in the scenes where he's out in the back of the frame, out in the back of the shot, that's him. Yeah, that's him walking. That's him moving around. It was just if you if 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 my dad was just walking in my house and I'm watching Man, um, Boba Fett and he just walks past the screen, he would think I'm watching Star Wars. The original, right. because that just looked so much like him. It was just incredible to see. Um, I think they the way they handled him was very well. Obviously, he still had his self doubts. Oh, yeah. uh, Rosario Dawson coming back for uh, a Sakatano, amazing. Of and, Always. And seeing the puppeteering on Grogu just completely elevate from from Mando. He's flipping. He's jumping. He's doing so much more, and I I think it's it's not to the point where obviously it's fake, like in like in uh, what episode two yeah. when when Yoda first fights. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing to see. We know that CGI. I, yeah, of course, it, it, you know it. But this is this is good stuff, and 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 it still feels like a puppet. Yeah, it felt like the puppet to me. I don't I don't know if maybe it's a mix of puppet and CGI. I, I but would go lead towards that direction. I would I would I would imagine, but. Man, did it look good? Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is what one I I have to say. Um, one, it's a good time to be a Star Wars fans, right? So good. The fact that they understood that this is the direction that it needs to go in it leaves me feeling so secured. Because one thing I I will say about the about Star Wars right now, right, is that especially after the last trilogy. Right. Right. It was a little irritating. Some of the some of the decisions that they made regarding that trilogy, because because I remember after the after the uh, the Force Awakens. Right. Man, it was a good time to be a Star Wars fans. It was right? back. Star Wars was back. Regardless of the criticisms you have of that movie. Right. It was just fun. It and was fun. It was it felt. It felt new because it was. I mean, we can call it what it is. Uh, the Force Awakens is just a new hope in, exactly. in a new skin. I want the new skin. Exactly. Give me the give me the 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 remaster of the game. One hundred percent with me. That's okay. So yeah, you start to feel great. Star Wars is back. You didn't think you were gonna get it ever again, and we have a new movie. Then the Last Jedi comes out, and now we have a fork in the road. The reason why I was so excited after the Force Awakens one, I love when the Star Wars community is speculating. Like they are the they are the best at that, 100%. and they are some of the most passionate, sort of insane group of people yes. you will ever interact with, right? And after that, to me, the, dude, after that, I had a whole I had fan fiction in my head, bro. I think a lot of Star Wars fans has written fan fiction in their head, dude. I was all like the in the middle of like writing it. Yeah, we right? were all writing episode seven, one hundred percent, and the, eight, the, and nine. The, we were all there. <laughs> The, the other elements that the Force Awakens showed up it w- is what really made me excited. The um, Finn was a storm stormtrooper that left. Ray was kind of like this wild child that grew up on the desert. Like she kind of like didn't. Uh, she was a little bit strange, mm-hmm. right? All that disappeared in the pre in the in the other movies. Recognizing right that the Star Wars universe has other. I would say even more important stories to tell, yes. right? Because like the overarching narrative, I think the thing, the oppression of the the empire, the the the, the fight with the rebels, everything. I think it's it's okay to acknowledge that that is generally over and done with. However, to to say like, okay, let's take a hand in maybe trying to give to give um the 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 Star Wars fans a new perspective on Star Wars, right? Not necessarily change it, but a new perspective. Yeah, because we can't... There, there's no changing the storylines that have happened. The Jedis, 
were there. They were not. They came back, took down the Empire. That happened. Mm -hmm. Skywalker happened. Skywalker is legend. 100%. But I think it's such a great choice they made with this show. and, And they presented it to us. They almost presented it to us in when Grogu and Luke have their final meeting. You can have this lightsaber that belonged to Yoda. We can go down this rabbit hole of regurgitating the Jedi order <laughs> and what went wrong. And we know from the movies, you have to, we're going to follow canon. Something's going to go wrong where 30 years from now, Grogu is not going to be aligned with Anakin because Anakin's alone. Or let's go down this new route where we go down the route of you're going to be a Mandalorian. Um, I forget the word that um, Mando uses, but the, the 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 foundling. foundling. Yes, you're gonna be a Mandalorian foundling, and that's the decision he makes. He he chooses to leave um, Luke's academy. He does not want to be the first student. He chooses to go back with Mando, and now we have the opportunity. We're gonna get into Mandalorian lore. We're gonna see what it takes to get back in the good graces because you took your mask off. We're gonna see what it's like to wield the black saber and to bring yes. back Mandalore. That's what I want to see. Me too. It's a new perspective, and it's going to be um, absolutely, from what we've seen, amazing. Yeah. Everything, because both seasons of, of, of The Mandalorian were incredible, right? Right. Because cause it, it allowed itself to foster relationships, which I think is so limited. Because, like, you know, one, one thing, I, I, I was talking to my brother about this, right? I love the first, I love the, the second prequel trilogy. Um, well, second the prequel trilogy, right? Uh, episodes <laughs> prequel. one, two, and three. Yeah, the episodes one, two, and three. Right, the first two episodes, I would say the biggest, my biggest criticisms, which I personally, I, I both kind of love and hate. Right, right. It's the very much the storytelling of a nerd who wanted to write a a lore book. He's yes. dumping information. He's this and that. He's metachlorian exactly. order. Um, they have um, political talks. Yes, um, the, the Senate, all that. This is a nerd writing his his lore book. That's what he's doing. One hundred percent. Right. <laughs> and I think that because he told his story in that manner, it 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 loses some people. Yeah. Right. I think in the future, recognizing where the kind of like um the 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 prequel trilogy went wrong. Right. Recognizing that, hey, we can do this in a series where we can we can give you the lore. Right. Where we'll we explore have- the lore, but we don't have exactly. to dump dump the information to you. Like because of this, this. No, this is just this is here. Environmental storytelling. Yes. It, we're here. We learn about Grogu slowly mm-hmm. and we still don't know much. Exactly. Uh, we, we just found out that he is even connected to the Jedi Order through this through these episodes. Um that he was there, uh, what's what he it seems Order. to be that he was there on Coruscant during Order sixty six. Yep, this is all great info. I want to know, but we don't. It could have been that very easily could have been. Uh, oh, this this foundling was taken from Coruscant to here. No, yeah, that could have been in the first in the second episode. Once we find out that this is who's in the pod, but they didn't do that. They allowed it to grow and show us with a meaningful way to show us. Exactly. Um, I think some of the best episodes of, of Mandalorian are where they're just on random planets yeah. doing random things. And you just find out things about these characters. From um, point A to point B. Yeah. Um, the episode, um, even leaving the planet where Grogu is taken from that second episode of Mandalorian, <laughs> where he just lifts up the, whatever beast is about to kill Mando. That's where we get to see, storytelling shine exactly and that's like the the star wars excuse me the star wars universe has so much like so much to tell right like i said i I was writing fan fiction because if something is able to to engage the brain right i think this is where star wars shines yes if if you can engage that part of our mind that made us fall in love with sort of the mysticism of star wars with the jedi right I think you're right there. Right? You're right there. The fans are ready. We're we're ready to love something. We again. we want to see it, and yeah. we want to see it, um, especially when it's done so well. And speaking of done so well, I just want to highlight um, another one of my favorite things 
um, that's so minor in the season when you really think about it in the whole season. Um, and I, if I misspeak, I apologize. I just don't know too much about this, and that's probably why I'm excited. Cad Bane, the the bounty hunter that shows up at the oh end. Oh my god, who is that? I don't know who that is, and and I know, and I've had people tell me who that is because he's. I believe he's in the Clone Wars. He um, is. He's in the Clone Wars. Um, which unfortunately I just never got around to watching. It was just a lot of episodes. I probably will one day. Um, but. His character was just so menacing. My God, His character design guy. was so good. The voice actor, or, or if he, if it's an actual actor with the voice there, <laughs> amazing. I, I don't know what's going on. I, I have so many questions. And all I know is this man scared me. This alien, whatever is whatever he's doing, it's working. He amazing. is makes me feel like he's more efficient than Han with a gun. Um Literally, some of the angles they shot him in with the sun beaming through his vi through his hat, his cowboy hat, and it just felt like the ultimate western. And they executed his character so well. Uh, Dude, I, I can't speak highly enough of that character. Like, holy shit! I've one. I didn't expect like a villain to be like. He's not in there long, right? Not at all. But he only has a few scenes. He's so effective. The first time he shows up, spoiler alert, right? Spoiler alert. If, if you, if you, if you, obviously, spoiler alert. The first thing he does is he beats the marshal. He kills the marshal. He kills the marshal. He kills. First of all, I I love that character. Me too. Um, uh, and I didn't think I would, I would when he first showed up. I thought I was just gonna see him as an actor, Timothy yeah. Oliphant, and just see like, ah, well, I mean, that's kind of weird to see in star wars they usually <laughs> go after lesser known actors but cool fine um he steals the show every time i think his character is so what i want to see from the characters in tattooing just gritty um hard working people mm. um and he just shoots it out with him and he and I, I i i was scared i thought he shot me i mean it was just <laughs> so good just uh, just talk when about you... executing introducing a character just in his voice, the grovel. Right? What is that? You felt it in your bone. Why he, does he have pipes coming out of his neck? Why are his eyes fully so red? Big. Like his what kind of race is, is he? What his skin is is such a distinct blue, but he still feels like just a a a, a guy with a gun that's gonna <laughs> yeah. that's gonna intimidate you. Everything he said was badass. Everything. Everything I, he said. I think he was a better villain than any of the new trilogy villains could have introduced. By far. Um, more menacing than Snoke. Yeah. I'm sorry. This Snoke, was, Snoke was a joke. To be fair, Sno Snoke, yeah. Snoke was an absolute Which joke. Which it sucks. Wasn't that Andy Circus? Oh was yeah, it, it was. It that was. That sucks to say. Sorry, uh, Cad Bane was better. Um, <laughs> it's just absolutely terrifying. And again, spoiler alert, it looks like Mando, I mean, I'm sorry, Boba Fett defeats him. I hope he's not defeated Me because I want to see this guy show up and, and wreck shit again and again. Yeah. And what an introduction of a character. And I think that's I think that's the great part, you know, for the for the Star Wars fan that has read almost every book and read the comics, reads the non canon and canon stuff. Um gets everything they finally saw a character on screen that they've been wanting to see for the longest time for the star wars fan that like me that is arguably one of the biggest star wars fans you'll meet but <laughs> i mean i watched the movies and i played some of the video games um that's pretty much where i stop and end and i i, I know some of the lore of other things but this character just came out of nowhere to me and just so excited me so much yeah and if we're going to just keep introducing, th this is what we need. New characters to just fall in love with. Yeah. And I believe um, Moff Gideon is dead, right? Is you know what? Um, I unless I see that, that, unless I see that body uh, burned to a crisp like Qui-Gon, <laughs> I'm just going to assume you're not dead because this ah. is, this is like comics and this is Star Wars. That's true. I mean, I, I hope he's not dead. I mean, and uh, other spoiler alert. Yes. We just said he shot down, um, the the marshal the marshal but he ends up in the back the tank at the end oh did i did i not see that marshal's alive 
Okay, so um, was, wow. Make sure you stay for the post credit scene. Oh, make no. sure you stay for the post credit okay. scene because yes, <laughs> the marshal is in a back to tank in Boba's back to tank. Okay. So it looks like Timothy Oliphant maybe is not done with Star Wars, which is exactly what I want. Yeah. Um, I was they they the, and that's pretty much what the 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 uh, the post credit scene is. Then then slowly zooming in on the back to tank to reveal it's Timothy Oliphant. I was actually kind of hoping it was Cad Bane. <laughs> just to torture him some more. Um, I don't know, man. But he was so good, just yeah. so so good. And then ultimately, the final episode, bringing all these characters in to together. one together. Um, put it, literally, you've been assembling this this team of characters all mm. together. This storyline, and you're just wrapping it up with a bow with just the sickest final battle all throughout Tatooine. Yes. Um, live uh, a huge. 30 feet droidicas. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, didn't, I, uh, I only thought I, mean, I would see that in the movies or video um, games. I, I was half expecting them to roll like a droidica. Um, whatever yeah, those machines too. were, um, more of that. That was amazing. Um, seeing Mando and Boba fight Together. side by side, jetpack to jetpack, flying around, seeing them get shot up, but it doesn't matter. They're wearing best car. It's just, what? What? What more do you want? What more can you ask for? This is Star Wars, dude. This Jedi. is Star Wars. And no <laughs> Jedi is involved. It, 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 there's it, no lightsabers to be seen. Well, didn't dark saber, but. Besides the dark saber. <laughs> and even then, it was useless. So, yeah. I mean, um, it was just so such a such a great way to, to cap off the, the season. It almost felt like um, you could say there were two different shows that got wrapped up into one um, through this season. And... I got to say, especially like you who saw it in the span of three days, mm-hmm. these seven episodes, they, that just hits. Yeah. That is I, I a would great say, season of TV. I would say that, um, one, I was worried that after I started watching, I think by episode six, where it was very clearly a more of a Mandalorian story, I was worried that they had lost confidence on the Boba Fett side of the story. But you can tell what the goal was, right? They were telling Boba's story, right? And they told it enough to get to a certain point, right? right? You could tell this is the future of Star Wars, right? At least in the TV version, because they they seamlessly integrated with each other, right? We we had Boba Fett during Mandalorian's time. We ha- now we had a lot more Mandalorian do- during Boba Fett's time, right? It's one storyline. It's 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 it, one absolutely universe. It's it, it's it's all the same. Um, where we're getting to the point where that 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 universe is building. Which I mean, uh, how could we have not expected this with John Favreau being involved? <laughs> That's I mean, true. The, the creator of the Ultimate Universe. So yeah. I mean, uh, it's Could've just it it's it's just good to see. And I mean, the slate of TV shows coming out. Um, oh, on one. Disney Plus for for Star Wars, it's. I mean, we might. I might as well just look it up. It is so good. We have Ahsoka coming out. Um, and, and Kenobi. Uh, oh, Kenobi finally got the. Did you see the? They announced the date. Oh, I did not see that. They announced the date this week. It's May twenty fifth. Really, the, the premiere of Obi Wan Kenobi, the limited series. Absolutely, dude, that um, is really close. A few months. It's right there. It's wow. Uh, I mean, to roll um, to roll from Boba Fett, and we're gonna. I mean, the Disney Plus train is just gonna keep on rolling. We're gonna roll into we finish Boba Fett now. Roll into Moon Knight in March, and then back on the Star Wars train in <laughs> May for Obi Wan Kenobi. That's all I could ask for. That is that's like I said, it's good a good time to be a Star what Wars. What a good fan. time. Um. We obviously had visions that came out, the um, anime version of, yes, of the Star Wars. Um, I haven't watched that yet. So I, I I've seen watch. a couple episodes. I like it. It's just it's short and sweet and simple. Doesn't um more of a, a creative spin to Star Wars than a lore spin, but you know, good to watch. Um, we have Andor the season the the show focused on the character from Rogue One, um, oh, Diego wow. Luna's show. The Acolyte, another show coming out um, regarding the High Republic, um, a Lando show that's in production, uh, Rangers of the New Republic. There are just shows on top of shows on top of shows yeah. that are coming. And if this is what's 
what Disney Plus has in store for us, I'm just so excited. Me too. I, I can't wait for more. I want to ask you, right? Since um since the Star Wars the movies are, are done, think of we we never touch that <laughs> that again. Not movies, right? I still want Star Wars feature films. Yeah, obviously. but they're taking a pause. Um, I think they, uh, Lucasfilms did say that. I think, um, yeah, Kathleen Kennedy, they said, you know, we're going to pause on making movies, um, which I think is the right decision after Solo. Um, not that I hate Solo. I just think, um, I thought Solo was quite good. I think Solo was good. I think, um, it kind of suffered what, um, what I said on the last podcast, um, in terms of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, having some changes post-production, ah, Solo had those same those same um yeah i heard about it, it was kind of, they, i remember the the voice the the main actor guy people were worried about him some stuff came out yeah and, it, um there was drama with who they chose as han which i mean I let's it face right. it i thought it was good but i mean you you're talking about casting somebody as a, a young harrison ford that's never going to be easy for anybody yeah I, um harrison then harrison ford has a very distinct look yeah and han solo is so iconic loved beloved like it's just th- th- that was going to be an uphill battle no matter what then mm. you have the directors changing after the film is yeah, filmed yeah. and i believe i mean uh, i don't think i'm wrong in saying this i believe it was uh um lord and miller who directed the movie that actually did the directing of the movie um lord and miller from into the spider verse bro wow. um and just a bunch of other things, um, Mitchell versus the machines, the after party, um, just, they've done so much, uh, the Lego movie, um, uh, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, um, who were originally set to be the ones to handle solo. Then it moves on to Ron Howard, um, a very particular type of director. I mean, I, I think that's what kills a lot of that movie, but uh, that movie set up a lot too. Um, so then they decide, okay, we're gonna put a pause on movies because we're not hitting it out the park like we used to. I'm okay with that. Give me, give me yeah, all the shows. Me too. I mean, the thing is though, right? Because what I was thinking about, because obviously, you know, it may maybe five to seven years from now, because I think it'll be a decently long pause. Yeah. Right. Maybe five to seven years now. When when they pick it up, right? I think they will pick it up in the framework of these shows, but. What do you like? Do you think? Because I still want my Jedi fix, right? One hundred percent. Um, um, I, 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 I love the Jedi. Yeah. I mean, who? I mean, how could you? This is this is why we fell in love with Star Wars. The idea of you becoming this ultimate knight, badass. Um, this ultimate badass, and then you know our generation who were kids. You know, you and I, we were kids yeah. when, when the prequels came out and now you have the Jedi's that do amazing sword choreography. Just yeah. to, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say it to this day, Star Wars, I, I understand keeping it in tune with the, what happened. I don't need to see a slow lightsaber fight ever again in my life Me neither. because I don't care if that's what they did in the original trilogy and we're just going to keep that because it makes sense. No, no, I need the fast pace jumping and swinging from episodes right. one, two, and three. That's what I want to see. And so that's what I want to see in a movie too. <laughs> Me too. Um, why wouldn't I want to see that type of action? It's the reason why I think these star Wars games do so good. Um, yeah, you can live it there out. was there was that one that I think was called something either similar to Force Awakens or um, oh, some, the Force Unleashed. The Force Unleashed. That was so great to oh, see because because I mean you're technically a Sith um, yeah. in that game, right? Um, then you have Jedi Fallen Order. Love that game too. Another amazing game um, because. You're being a Jedi. That's what we all want to do. Exactly. We want to. We all dressed up as a Jedi for Halloween. We all want to be able to like, make the everything. sound. Like that's what we want. So yes. Well, I want to see a Jedi story. Absolutely. Yeah. It just has to be the right story, and it just cannot be a Skywalker. Yeah, I think. I think right because because um you know people before this episode I think a lot of people were speculating like when, when I say like. They'll, they'll build it off the framework, right? Because I think right now, especially for this new generation, 
Because, you, you know, surprisingly, a lot of people don't really follow Star Wars anymore, right? Because we, we have our fans, but I, um, the, like, for example, the new trilogy, right? It, right. it attracted a lot of new fans, but it didn't attract them in a way that necessarily made them say, oh, let, let's go back and maybe watch all the original all the way back in the, in the 70s. Which, it, it's it's hard, I think. Yeah. Um, if you, if, if I put in front of a, a 10 year old, a 15 year old, a 20 year old for the first time, doesn't know a lick of star Wars, you watch the force awakens and then you, you watch the less Jedi, you, you, you're going to blow their mind. Yeah. And then you ask them, we love star Wars, but you ask them to sit through a seventies movie. The pacing is I, I actually, I was watching uh, a new hope this week. Just yeah. coincidentally, I was just eating dinner. We threw it a new hope on because this is what we do. <laughs> and there's a point in the, the final battle um, when they're going to attack the death star. There's a good five to 10 minutes. There's no music. There's just really? flying. They're just flying. They're just flying wow. when, when, when no, the, the pace of making a movie back then versus now. It's just a movie is so different. You put on any eighties movie, 70 movies, nineties movie, the pacing of the movie is different. Not the, the the cinematography is different. The the what what you give in, as far as information, the sound, it's all just completely new. Yeah. So I mean, it's just yeah, I can see why a, a fan might not go backwards. Yeah, and what I'm saying in regards to that is that, um, right, with the, they don't have the same the new generation of fans. They don't have the same vision of iconic characters. Right. As us, right? We have our Hans, we have our Leia's, we have our Luke, obviously, right? Right. But these guys, Mando is quickly becoming that. Grogu is becoming that. 100%. And that, you know, uh, if they use these guys to, to tell a future Jedi story, because everyone's speculating there's probably going to be some sort of large timeline skip with Grogu, right? There has to be. And I, I think that that's the only way where we get to a point where they say, okay, Five to seven years now. Maybe we get two, three, four more scenes of the Mandalorian, right? And the story ends there, right? Boba Fett's story ends regardless of what happens. And we get, we can see through like the, the continuous storytelling of these TV shows, of these other mediums, the rise of this kind of new conflict within the Star Wars universe, which is one of the things that I hated about the, 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 the newest trilogy. Like, okay, you obviously just came up with something, right? First Order... They're just there now for some reason. No for some point. reason, these evil bad guys yeah, are just here. Evil bad guys are back, I uh. guess. You know, and like to to be able to tell a new story, a new conflict, new villains, new villains too. I think this is this is the way they do it, right? And they they send it off. They they have that big kind of like exclamation mark with a movie. That's how I think you get it. I, absolutely, you you create these shows, you build up these shows, you make the feature film. Yeah, because Marvel has proven right. If you make it good, everyone will watch these shows, and if the movie comes out, everyone will know what's going on. Because that's that was the biggest fear. Like, okay, if we make all these movies over like ten plus years, if, if is everyone gonna be able to follow it? Like, yes, we're gonna be able to. And we're gonna it. make fun of the people that show up to Avengers Endgame <laughs> not knowing who's who. You dork! You should have been watching. Exactly. What are you like, talking are you about? Doing? Get out of here! I don't care that you don't understand. It's been twenty three movies. Do your homework. Exactly. Like, <laughs> shut up. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely what can happen. I mean, it's just about building this universe. I think we're in a great place. Oh yeah. Um, and the next Jedi story, whenever we get it, I'm excited. Me too. Because um, if, as long as we put the trust in the right storytellers, the people that are making these shows, that are making these video games, we're good. We're gonna be just as happy. Okay. So we talked about Star Wars for nearly an hour. Should we go ahead and? <laughs> Should we go ahead and shift topics? Yeah, I, I think we should. I think we should yeah. uh, uh, talk a little bit else uh, elsewhere. Um, so, but let's keep it in the realm of uh, TV shows. Um, and I want to keep it in the realm of a show that I need to apologize to its creators. And um, a show I thought was going to be some mid, some just normal uh, TV show that you could, don't need to watch. And I'm just been proven wrong every single week. And I'm talking about Peacemaker. <laughs> what? What a TV show. Yeah. I mean. Uh, 
James Gunn, I am so sorry. I was telling everybody, who wants a Peacemaker show with John Cena? I mean, who needs this? This is this is who we spin off from the Suicide Squad. Just a great film with so many amazing characters. The guy with the white pants. I could not have been more wrong. Every week I go back and I say, Jesus Christ, this might be some of the greatest comic book film ever filmed. Yes. It's insane. Yeah. It's, and it's also fucking hilarious. So funny. It, 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 it might possibly be the funniest show of the past year. Yeah, um, for me anyways. Uh, uh, the comedy is so rich in this show because it's it's normal comedy that you yeah. have with your friend. Awkward conversations. Awkward conversations. Um, one-offs that don't maybe make the most sense. Exactly. But, hey, I said it anyway, so screw it. We're going to roll with it. He's not afraid to make his characters look stupid. <laughs> not at all even the and, smart ones they uh, every character has looked dumb in this show and <laughs> and let me tell you i've just enjoyed it so much so for just as a bit of background i mean obviously um you know we had the suicide squad that came out um at the end of the movie peacemaker um well uh, peacemaker is shot by blood sport um yeah yeah um it just elba's character um, and it looks like he dies and it looks like a building falls on top of him. But in the post credit scene, we see he's in a hospital um, recovering because there's more to be done with Peacemaker. And that's where the show picks up. And literally off the bat, just with the jokes. I mean, I, I can't stress enough how funny in this show is. I that mean, first scene with the custodian, yeah, the, Jamil. Yeah. I it, watched it, it three times. We were laughing so it's hard. It's so funny. I mean, it's just this white guy being told, <laughs> oh, you're that superhero. You only ever kill people of color. I mean, it, <laughs> who, who thinks, makes jokes like, like that? How, I mean, the uncomfort that must have been for this poor John Cena guy just to say, the, the, to, to say like, well, no, I, I mean, I kill white people too. I mean, what kind of comedy is this it's the kind i want yeah, me too uh, it's, it's not afraid to go there it not at all every single time they take it too far and then some <laughs> yeah it's just it's so good um i think one of the biggest things about peacemaker that i've loved so far in this season yeah um it has been just how grounded the storyline is but at the same time this is some superhero shit it has you know, ridiculous, like what, pocket dimensions and aliens. And- it, it meant, yeah, everything gets mentioned. Superman, Batman, they get the Flash. They're all mentioned and in the funniest ways, not just because, hey, we're a DC show, so yeah. we're going to mention them. Um, just absolute what normal people would say about these characters. Um, like you said, pocket dimensions for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> in, in, a, in a character that's really just like a, mil- uh, a military type character. Um, there's not much super about Peacemaker besides exactly. the fact that he can use any weapon. He's huge uh, as hell. Uh, f- can fight because he's huge <laughs> as hell. I mean, um, we know that about John Cena. Um, and the fact that uh, what makes him just so rich as a character, he'll do anything for peace. He'll kill any, like he said before, he'll kill any man, yeah, woman, or child, true. um, to get to peace. But it, it re- this season, this show really just took a character that was just a complete piece of shit, you know, just a real a, a character you don't you wouldn't root for. Yeah, in from the movie and just turned it around to to have this introspection. Like, wait, am I the bad guy? Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it, the, the the toxic masculinity is so yes. um, it's, it's, it's so obvious, bro. Like. James Gunn, you brilliant motherfucker. You. Literally. What I love about this series, right, is that it's so, it's, it's, for, for me, when a character, when a character, when somebody has a vision for a story, you can see it, right? The entire series is portraying Peacemaker's insecurities on the forefront and, and, and showing, and, and showing other people who see it, who spent this kind of prolonged time with him say, this is why you're like this. This is why you're like, this. especially from the from Adebayo, who's really like us, right? Just kind of a normal person. Yeah, she's who, the most us uh, out of any character on exactly. the show. Just a normal person that says, "Wait, hold on, are we killing people? Wait, hold on, why are we committing <laughs> crimes? Wait, hold on, this is horrible. This is everything about this is terrible." Yeah. Um, 
the, she's our voice on this show. Such an incredible actress. Yes. Um, from Orange is the New Black to here. I just love to see. Yeah. Um, Representing. Absolutely. Um, her, her, her character shine. Um, and it's really just that, that battle in, in Peacemaker that just, um, him just realizing and the self-reflection of, wait, I have I, everything I've been doing, everything yeah. I've ever believed, has it all been wrong? It's just, and it's such a tight knit story. Um, not a wasted scene goes by. Not There's no fluff. Um, which is, it's hard to do these days. I mean, yeah. There's there's always gonna be room for like, well, we didn't need to see this or that. And I, I don't know if James Gunn's ever directed T V before, but I would think he's uh showing a master class in how to do it for the first time or at all. Because it's just such a tight story. Mm-hmm. So enjoyable to watch every week. Um we're filming this um this episode um when episode eight is gonna drop. Yeah. And that's dropping tonight. So we have two more episodes of Peacemaker coming out. Uh, I'm going to hate to see it end. Um, Me too. Because I- I've recommended this show to everybody. Literally, Me too. any person that asks, what what do you want? You have to watch Peacemaker. Peacemaker through and through. Um, the characters on this show are so out of bounds. <laughs> um, and everything they do. Um, Vigilante. What a psychopath. Yeah, I love how. One thing I love about vigilante is that he's kind of like um peacemakers foil right because if you think about it they're the same person they do the same thing they're they're best friends like really they've interacted with each other they've been doing this shit really together for years right and peacemaker he see like you see peacemaker through vigilante in a way but peacemaker gets to have through this show a character journey where he where he can analyze okay my father's a piece of shit he's the one who taught me this am i right to do this am i right like we we are seeing the evolution of peacemaker thinking for himself absolutely and that's such a great character and we consistently see this other guy who who like we're like wait this guy's insane right I, that's the first legitimately thing about vigilante he, he's, he's insane, insane. He, but like this is also kind of peacemaker <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah and, and it's just so it's so great to see. I mean, James Gunn. I mean, we've seen it before with Guardians. Mm. He takes these characters that nobody cares about, and he finds he loves them. Yeah, and he finds a way to show us. Oh, we should love them too. Um, Vigilante, a character that was on um, the CW show, the CW um, superhero universe, Arrow. I mean, just played the 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 typical way you would think a mercenary would be played. And then on this show, we just have this psychopathic killer who has some of the best lines in the show. I mean, literally when that jail scene, when he's accusing first, first of all, what am I describing? Vigilante in jail, <laughs> accusing, um, basically Nazis. Yeah. Um, uh, calling them out on their racism. Why? I mean, it's just, and, and it's so good. It's so well written. Every character takes you there. And and another character that I want to um highlight that is just so good on the show yeah. is um Mern. Yes. Um I want to get the actor's name. Um Oh yeah, definitely. He's done an incredible job. Just so good um at playing a character that we probably um his name is Chukwudi Iwuji. Mm-hmm. Um just playing a character that is um, not at all what he seems. Um, don't know if you should trust, but at the end of the day, you kind of hope you do. Yeah. Um, just such an in- incredible acting uh, on behalf of this guy. Um, I've enjoyed every scene that he's been a part of. And he, this is the first time he's worked with James Gunn. But because of this, he, he wrote himself into Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Oh, yeah, um, you mentioned that. I mentioned this before to you. But um, he's because of what he did to for this show. James Gunn said, "I have to have you in, in <laughs> Guardians choice, Three, James. and I can't wait." It's it's just so great to see even just these actors flourish yeah. because because of this show. He's gonna add so much to the the Guardians role. And if you if you ask me who he's playing, I think he's gonna play the High Evolutionary. Really, um, that's my guess. We can see down the line if I'm right or not. Um, come back to me in 2023, see if I was wrong. Um, 
I think he'll be playing the creator and um, abuser of Rocket. This guy, he just plays um, the, this character so well. Um, a tortured character, um, not somebody who maybe we should root for, but we might. I don't know. But I just got to say, I, I've been loving seeing that in the season. We have gorillas. <laughs> that was a great scene. My um, um, telepathic gorillas. We have to think Grodd. Yeah. Obviously, whenever you see a gorilla in the DC um, capacity, you have to think Gorilla Grodd. But and we might not even be that. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with it just being random gorillas that he sent out into the world to to cause havoc. I have to say, it, it, this has been one of those shows, um, kind of like Boba Fett, that, that creeps up on you. But, man, it's just good TV. Yeah. What a time. It's 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 it's, it's purely inter. You know, it's funny. I, I I mentioned this. I think that my brother Mern, he hasn't made one joke on the show, but he's hilarious. <laughs> not one, not one. He 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 just talks, and it's funny as hell. He's just mad. It's funny as hell. Um, and those the these characters. I have to say, John Cena has just done such an incredible job. Mm -hmm. In in making a, a character so interesting and so three dimensional, just I mean, you you think of this character is pretty straightforward. It should be cut and clean and dry, yeah. kind of how how he was in uh, the Suicide Squad, but for his turn as being I don't know maybe an actual bad guy, bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that last episode where he's playing the piano and John Cena's for real playing the piano, uh, a full shot. I mean. The cinematography, even everything about this show, is just so good. I mean, I I can't complain about the show at all. Me I mean, neither. it sounds like I'm just. Uh, I mean, we. I mean, it's if a show deserves endless praise, we will give it I'm, endless praise. I'm going to give it endless praise. It's been so good. So we have the next two episodes coming out. We know now. Um, our villain, our villain is butterflies. They've been Goff. code. They yeah, Goff, the the lead butterfly. And this whole season, they've been using codename Butterfly, codename Butterfly. So I, I kept wondering, what kind of alien is this going to be that is going to be, um, you know, attacking us? And lo and behold, in James Gunn fashion, nope, we meant a butterfly. It's yeah. a it's a gang of <laughs> alien butterflies, killer butterflies that are going to attack your city and take over. I mean, what 80s horror film is this? Oh, my God. Speaking of 80s horror, my goodness, man. The brutality of which they take over is disturbing as all hell. That gave me literal nightmare. When they first, when Goff first, okay, so the last episode, one of the major things that happened is, of course, if you watch it, is that Goff got free um, while... Um, while Vigilante and um, Peacemaker were escaping. Exactly. Um, His custody. jaw broke, and he, he Goff took the first person that he could, which was Sophie, one of my... Sophie is her name, right? Yeah, Sophie Song, yeah. Sophie Song, one of my favorite characters, one of the cops, which is, she's also hilarious, right? And the way that it inserted itself into her brain, I get like, while it was happening, like, oh no, oh my God, it yeah, keeps that's, going. Yeah, that's one of those things where like, uh, you never want to see something go into a mouth and nose, like just crawl into, and it's just gross. And yeah. the the blood that spills out. This the is pain. realistic. I mean, we've you see shows all the time. Something comes into a s smoke or a, a creature goes in, and it just goes in all nice and tight. Yeah. And, oh, nothing happens. No, James got said no. If something's gonna crawl into your body, blood's gonna spew out. You're gonna you're gonna hear the crunches going through the brain. It's ah. the skeleton. It's gross. It's it's disgusting beyond. All it's hell, almost man. too accurate because I want to know why they know that. That's what would happen. It's gross. <laughs> they did their research. They did. I guess. Oh, gosh. oh my goodness. But so good. So then, um, lo and behold, this army of butterflies takes over the whole police, uh, police station, including um, prisoners that are there oh, in yeah. that in that county jail. Um, so now we have just an army of butterflies um, running around, and this team of five buffoons. Five of them, right? I mean. <laughs> Sure. Oh, and also we got the White Dragon, who's got his suit of armor. Like we set him up for these next few episodes. Yeah, um, Robert Patrick as um, an old racist. One of the goats. By one, the way. one of the goats. I mean, always will be 
um, near and dear to any sci-fi fan. Yeah, of um, As T2, you still see T2 in him, even though... He used to be in my nightmares, bro. It, it, I up. mean, it has to be, because, <laughs> I mean... Um, His face just looks villainous. 100%, and he just looks like he's still running around looking for John Connor <laughs> to kill him. But, I mean, he plays such a terrible human being and it's and not in the redeeming way like peacemaker no, no. just an absolute racist <laughs> asshole, uh, asshole. And, and i love the fact that they take it there i mean it's just so real i mean we're gonna um you know one of the things that we complimented um second shout out falcon and the winter soldier is calling out race in this time period and this is in a different way, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> if we're going to have a super villain that is basically a Nazi basically. Um, and racist against anything that is not the Aryan white man, <laughs> yeah, he's going to be dropping racist comments every time you see him on screen. Yeah. And that's exactly what he does. But and, and this is a, a super villain I'm unfamiliar with. I've never yeah. heard of the white dragon, but you he puts his suit on finally in this uh, in this last episode. Cool suit, by the way. I mean, I thought I was watching He-Man in the Universe, a live action. <laughs> yeah. um, just a total badass suit. Um, I believe you're going to cause havoc. And you're just going to um, wreck shit for the Peacemaker team, who already has the problem of an army of exactly. alien-infested humans. I mean... What is going to happen? What, we have two episodes to, to go through. I, I, I don't know what can happen. Um, I'm almost thinking... I don't know if it'll be to the detriment of the show or not. Yeah. But I'm almost thinking we're gonna get some type of big cameo. Really? Because I feel like they they probably do need some more muscle. Uh, muscle uh, yeah, I mean, power. it's just it's too much for any one team to handle, and they're cool. a small team to begin with, with only uh, two Peace supers, Saber, vigilante, uh, vigilante. Unless they, um, I mean, um, judo master, he's gone. Yes. I believe. I think he did escape. No? Am I wrong? Didn't didn't he die? Did he die? I don't remember. But yeah, what I do either. know is this. No, they tied him back up for some reason. Uh, yeah. but I thought he got pierced in the heart. Um, shot in the heart. Yes. Yes, he did. He did get shot in the heart. So if he's dead or not, don't know. Um, Adebayo did shoot him. But either way, we have Peacemaker and Vigilante as our supers. And then we have Mern, um, Economos. Um, well. It's Economos. Um, out of bio, and um, I'm blanking on her name. Hardcore. Um, hardcore as a, a human team. That is not enough for an army of no aliens and the White Dragon. I'm thinking a big. We could, I don't know. I think James Gunn could pull off a bigger cameo from either yeah, a supervillain or a hero. Yeah, we uh, we never know. I mean, maybe maybe even a a hero that we've. We might not ever expect because of his love of obscure characters. Oh yeah, he does that. Maybe well, uh, just a society. Um, he did raid uh, the armory for his father, didn't he? Yeah, Peacemaker did raid the armory. Um, even up things a little bit. He could. I mean, he has his. He he did grab more than one um, helmet. Yeah, and you know. So we and from what we've seen, those helmets are are godly. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think I think we might. That's my prediction for what could happen. That. I think a big cameo is coming. Like he calls. Well, I just realized I was like, maybe he calls one of his Suicide Squad friends. I don't think they like him anymore. Uh, I, I, I think they hate him. Yeah, um, I, think they, I think they hate him. Oh, oh, I was I was mentioning this to my brother. Um, so one of the funniest things about uh, White Dragon is the fact that he's like uh, apparently a super smart guy who creates all these things. And he says these really dumb racist jokes that to other normal people are like this is you are so stupid. Yeah, and you have to be dumb. But he thinks he's so clever. Like God, I got you, the I called, Asian woman. I called you a noodle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like bro, that doesn't like, make sense. But he has a pocket dimension in his household. He creates this weaponry. What more don't we know about him? It's it's so true. Exactly. The, like, the, I, I the possibilities are endless. It's it's kind of weird for me to say that I love my uh, uh, this Nazi <laughs> character, but yes, I do enjoy this character. <laughs> I mean, you have to. I think I think you're. I think we're allowed. I think we're allowed <laughs> to laugh. Yeah, you're allowed to like him. Yeah. Just for the dynamic he brings to the show. Um, I I we we're gonna wrap up this this um this season in the next two episodes. Um, I don't know how 
you know, they play out. Um, do does Peacemaker have his team uh, on his back? Does uh, will there be uh, uh, more reinforcements to come? And then obviously, um, the whole city is coming after him. Not only yeah. these aliens, um, but now we uh, it's revealed that Adebayo's portrayal oh, uh, yeah. did work with the the fake um, notebook Diary, that she yeah. uh, that she planted at the hands of Amanda Waller. Which again, in the first episode, we get Amanda Waller was not expecting that. Me neither. So I mean, I think the possibilities are endless. Really with these endless, next two, man. With these next two episodes, I'm so excited to just. Um, I love being in the saloon, but I'm excited to go home and watch. Me too. Uh, um, me, me too. It, it's just. It. With that saying, we should we should probably wrap it up with. You want to go into the acquisition for a little bit? I think so. Yeah, I think minutes. I think it's um um worth mentioning. I, I definitely want to um talk about it um before we wrap up today's episode. So what um we're mentioning is the recent. Big acquisitions in the game world. Now, I'm going to be um, transparent, clear, honest. I am the most casual gamer you will meet. So I will be speaking from the perspective of the average consumer um, watching this play out. But we had Microsoft yep. acquire Activision Blizzard yep. early January. Yes. Um, which is still being, it's still happening, um, I, uh, being vetted. Yeah. I just saw that it's being vetted by the Fair Trade Commission. Yeah. Um. Because I mean, it's such a big acqu- seventy billion dollars. I mean, that is they're gonna, they're gonna, the government's going to check in on that purchase. <laughs> yeah. Um. They're going to make sure everything is up to date on that one. Um. And then uh, uh last week or the week before, Sony acquires Bungie. Yep. Um. I think for a lot less. I think for maybe this. Uh, I don't remember oh, the amount. Billion dollars, about three point four billion dollars. Yeah, so three billion for three point somewhere around the range of four billion versus sixty billion. I mean, we're still talking billions. <laughs> yeah. Um, still a lot of money. What are your thoughts when you hear about these companies um buying these, I guess um legacy um software development companies? I mean, what do you think the play is here? Yeah, so I ha- I'm a very, like, hardcore gamer, right? Gaming right. is my main hobby. So when I hear something like this, right? So I've been following gaming, gaming news for a long time. So, like, for example, when I heard something um, as something like Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, right? Not just on the business side. I'm thinking of, of I don't know if you've heard, but, you know, Activision Blizzard has really recently run into a lot of controversy. Right. right. Yeah. I, with I, the with the within the company of um, sexual harassment, all all the type of things you hear at any other company that yeah. you don't want to hear. Right. Exactly. Every do they they if they had if there was a checklist, <laughs> Activision <laughs> Blizzard would have filled out all of them with the crap they That's were doing. Terrible. <laughs> like, even all the way towards the end, what was it like? A female like executive was like literally getting paid less than her male counterpart for the same job. Like every single stupid thing that that a company shouldn't do, they did it. And right? they were underpaying employees, making employees work longer hours, harassing uh, them. Uh, Right. Just an absolute shit show. From that perspective, right? We 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 understood that uh, that Microsoft said, "Okay, we have enough reputation as a company, Microsoft itself, to say we can buy Activision Blizzard and and not have any of that kind of reputation bounce back on us, right? Because what they what people see will say, okay, now it's under new leadership." Right now, it's now it's right. under some somebody else, uh, Phil Spencer. Then they, that will be the new CEO once everything gets confirmed. Say, okay, this is going to be a revival for Activision Blizzard, and at the same time, Activision Blizzard is going to get all these new IPs, all this, all all these developers. Because because what people have to recognize is when uh, a major uh, company like Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard, what they're really buying is the intellectual property, right? Right, which is which is what I see when when I see a purchase like that. As the most casual fan, what I see is okay, Microsoft, which I equate to Xbox, mm-hmm. which I equate to. Damn, am I gonna be able to play 2K on my PS5? Uh, that's what I see. Yeah, um, totally so as as the most as the most casual thing. Um, because I mean, why we've had exclusives 
um in this modern era of gaming you know Definitely. xbox has always been halo um sony has had their properties as of late um, um god of war spider-man Rise things like man. that so um that's the, the I, I don't know if fear is the right word but that's the first hmm yeah mm-hmm. no What's i can actually here? i would say like for most people right i i can actually alleviate their their fears on that right because i don't personally believe i think they announced something recently right that um playstation titles will st- uh, xbox titles will still be on playstation right even things like call of duty and things like that they will still be on playstation now the reason why is because like i said i've been following this stuff for a long time the reason why is because um the reason why there's even exclusives in the first place is because companies want to drive their console sales, right? If something's only on Xbox, right, maybe uh, you'd consider an Xbox over a PlayStation. Right. However, Microsoft, right, all the way back in 2014, when they first launched the Xbox One, they made a huge, huge blunder, and they focused, they like, the biggest marketing blunder of really of all time, and focused entirely on, like, a t- the TV experience. I remember really, this. Yeah, and they really ignored the gamers. That has them doing all of this has been them fixing their mistake since 2013, 2014. Mm. All of it. That's why that's why they've been upping their technology. That's why they've been, um, you know, buying studios left and right. This is that play. And one of the biggest the biggest centerpiece of that play has been Game Pass. Right. So the advantage of Game Pass is that you get all major, even triple triple A releases. All right. Day one, completely free. When you pay for the pass. Exactly. As long as you pay to pay for the pass. And you get what, you know, everyone gets like $1. Um, like, ultimate, I think the first time you get, you get like $1 uh, and you get it for like three months, which is insane. That's an insane pricing. Exactly. And then after that, it's 10 bucks a month. Like, what? I, I have it. It's, it's ridiculous. I played Halo Infinite completely free. And then they gave me like Forza Horizon 5, like completely new games free, right? And the thing is, right, in terms of exclusivity, now you now you have Game Pass, right? You don't necessarily need that, um, that pure type of exclusivity because imagine the situation, right? Say a Call of Duty comes out, right? They own Call of Duty. They own the IP now, right? Why would they prevent it? Why would they not sell it on PlayStation, right? Because Game Pass is still exclusively on Xbox, right? So, for example, if somebody goes to the shop, right, and they say, "Okay, I'm gonna, buy, I want to buy this new, um, this new sixty dollar game," right? However, if I buy an Xbox, I can get it for free day one. However, if I still want a PlayStation, I can still buy buy that, but I'll I'll get it for sixty dollars. You don't need to necessarily compete in that in way. the exclusive game because you have the Game Pass exactly, and and which Sony doesn't have. I mean, I know they have a version of it. Yeah, but it's but it, it, yeah, it's not the level of games that you're getting on. I mean, if you're getting Halo, yeah, on exactly. your Game Pass, that's that's the marquee. That, yeah, exactly. that is the Xbox. Exactly. So you know, from that position, you can see like, okay, Microsoft has got it on lock. They know what they're doing. They they want to become the Netflix of video games and this is one of the many steps that they're going to take to do that okay so that that um as a casual consumer that kind of like alleviates that i mean yeah. everybody's going to have their exclusives and that, it just is what it is exactly but i mean um it's good to 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 see that i mean it's still going to be available across wide so then we have sony buying bungie which bungie i know is the original developers of halo, halo. um I don't know too many other games that were done by Bungie, but they currently do Destiny. Right, Destiny, which is huge. Yeah. Um, are these both just smart moves by two smart companies? Is there something that um, I don't know? They they shouldn't be thinking. I, 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 let me know. I mean, yeah. Um, it's a genius. It's it's, it's 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 so fucking genius. I'm like, I called it. You know, in in my in my WhatsApp group channel we we group uh yeah I'm in my whatsapp group between my friends we're all like super nerds super gamers and stuff like that we talk about this stuff all the time right and i literally called it the day before it went off right because uh, you know i'm i'm on on forums there's a lot of rumors that come out one of the major rumors right was that sony was looking to get into the live service game right like um live like service 
Yeah, like live service, like a game that that's perpetual. Like say, like a Destiny. It's like, okay. like think of like video console MMOs. Okay. Essentially, right? They were looking to fill out that void because Sony isn't really associated with any live service games. You you know the Marvel Avengers game? Yes. Uh-huh. That's a live service game. You know where they have like a, a loot a cash shop. There's oh, constant okay. so, updates. Uh, constant um level packs coming out exactly every few weeks. You know, or it's months. perpetually online things like that. Got it. You know, live service. So they wanted to get into that market and, but which is, which is destiny. Yes, exactly. But not necessarily that, but, um, they wanted a foundation, right? Because what they released is that over the next four years or was it six? I don't quite remember. They plan to release over 10 live service games, right? So I, there's one thing that, that's, that's certain that you, you would have to know about a Bungie and destiny, right? So destiny came out in 2014, right? The parent company, uh, well, the publisher that Destiny was associated with, right, uh, that Bungie was associated with to help make the game was Activision Blizzard, ironically. Right? That is ironic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? But Bungie didn't like the business practices and the kind of uh, creative restriction that Activision Blizzard had on Bungie and Destiny, had on the IP, right? So... A few uh after Destiny two Destiny two came out the sequel to Destiny and things started falling apart Destiny two started kind of like the fans I myself was a is a fan of Destiny we started kind of like backing away from the game because it was kind of shit yeah like, it was absolute dog crap it had a cash shop that was like a slap in the face it really had no content the game was just in a bad place they left Activision Blizzard they separated and then they went independent. Right. Yeah, and started yeah. publishing the game themselves and they got really bad the creative control. And since that, it's taken some time, but they've gotten to a decent place in terms of uh, of what Destiny is. With that same Destiny 2 game. Exactly. Through updates. Exactly. So now then we're in a situation where um where essentially now now that Bungie has has is publishing independent, it's becoming it has become much harder for them. Without all that, all that Activision Blizzard money, they got to do everything themselves. Right. Right. Now Sony comes in, but the thing is, the Destiny franchise is the most popular live service game ever. You hear about it all the time. I see it all the time on my exactly. Twitter. Let's do a raid. Let's. When's the next raid? I don't even know what that is because I don't play the game. <laughs> but I can imagine. Okay, these guys are gonna get together. And they're gonna perform some type of set mission that's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, cool. I I, get, I can grasp that. Yeah. Exactly. But let's do a raid. Let's. I, I almost always want to pick up the control, but I know I'm gonna get smoked as soon as I uh, <laughs> enter any type of lobby. But I mean, <laughs> is this the same scenario of? And I've heard this before. Back to Star Wars, kind of. What well, ba- what happened with Battlefront Two? That um, with dice. With dice that it comes out, Battlefront Two comes out, it's crap, and then a year later it's worth revisiting because of the updates they make. Is it a, a similar trajectory? What happened with Destiny? It's 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 kind of like kind of the same thing with, with, with what happened with dice is that um, EA is a piece of shit company and they want to make all the money. But is, is EA not under Activision or it's two separate companies? Oh uh, well, the thing with th- that that is that. Um, EA no uh no EA is not under Activision at least I don't think so okay no, they're, they're okay. okay but the thing what happened was that is that yes EA was doing the Star Wars but Disney was also star the fact that EA tried to do really scummy monetization practices right and when it blew back against the Star Wars IP so hard Disney was like hey you gotta change something. God. That changed because Star Disney was like, "Hey, you don't can't mess screw up Star we're Wars. not messing up Star Wars money." Exactly, Got that's it. what happened with them, which Got was it. awesome. By the way, I love that <laughs> they actually changed everything because the developers made a great game underneath. It's just that you know EA just tried to be scumbags like they always are. Got it. But but back to De- but but back to Destiny and Bungie. Since Destiny has been the best, the most consistent live service game of all time, really. They need that structure to get started on their own live service property, right? Because they, the the details of that of that acquisition came out. That's Bungie, unlike what they had with Activision Blizzard, which I knew that that they would probably be cautious of doing. That's why I was so I was like, kind of like, okay, there has to be something to this contract. The, Bungie is keeping kind of like their creative autonomy, Damn. right? They're not gonna be like. Um, 
Tony isn't going to come and say, oh, Destiny, Bungie, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. No, it's Bungie is helping them create their structure for their upcoming live service game. That's the most important thing. Bungie's going to do what they want, right? And they're going to have the, the backing of all that nice Sony money. I mean, it's a lot of money there. <laughs> and what I heard is that they paid so much because $3.4 billion is a lot of money, right? right? For one studio, right? Essentially, um, I heard that almost for every, uh, for almost every single employee, uh, Sony's paying essentially a million dollars, a million freaking dollars in salary. That is exactly. insane. That that is absolutely insane because they're willing to invest that money because they know what the hell they're doing. I mean, yeah. I mean, even if if a, if a game comes out, it does so bad and still is one of the best games in that category. It, it's obvious they they know there's what, something special. There's there. something special there. I mean, it's lasted so long, and I can't even believe that when you say it out loud that Destiny came out what 20, 2014? 2014. That's Thank insane. You. That's seven years. I met my uh some of my longtime friends on Destiny. I uh my friend that's working on this channel. She I met her on Destiny. It's, it's a it's yeah a game balloon connection. <laughs> exactly. That was our very first video. That's awesome. Yeah. So then, uh, asking you this, would you say, um, just rounding out the deals? I mean, obviously these deals got to get approved by the government. Yeah. It's still in process. We still have more to see with what happens with these deals. This is just the announcement of, yeah, we're doing it. Um, we don't know if it gets blocked. We don't know if, uh, how far it goes. Yeah. Would, in your opinion, would you say versus Microsoft versus Sony who, who won? In terms of their deals, or or do we just see two winners um, expanding? I, you know, who won the gamers? The the gamers won <laughs> because because both these both these guys are giants in the gaming industry. They'll be fine. One hundred percent. They'll they'll be fine. There's always gonna be a PlayStation. There's always gonna be a, a the, Xbox. The, the the question always becomes whether the consumer wins, right? Because obviously they're buying out these smaller developers. You're thinking, oh, this is gonna become a, a monopoly. Right. Yeah, that, that's the first thing I think. Um, yeah. If um, th these are software companies, and mm -hmm. the the Sony, I know they create their own. They have their own studios. Yeah. Um, Microsoft has their own studios, obviously, but they create the console that gets, gets played on. It's like exactly. It's the Apple argument. Um, with software and hardware all being all together, but if the games are gonna benefit from this, I I hear you. I'm. We all want better games at, at a certain point. Yeah, of course. Here's the thing. People people fear that word monopoly, but it's a little bit different when it comes to video game industry, right? Because let's say like a, a, a company like Amazon, right? How they work. Like, like for example, what Amazon does is, is if, there's their, if there's a competing product, right? What Amazon does is they sell that same product, but at a major loss because Amazon can afford it. And once that product, the, the maker of that product, like goes out of business... Amazon just buys it. That's one of their key business practices that they, they've been doing for years. Right. They eliminate market share and then they just buy the, they just buy the company. They buy it out because right? they can. You th cause you, cause when you see something like this, you think, okay, these companies are becoming too big, right? What's the video game industry going to look like when there's essentially no competition? The problem, the, the thing is, right? One person can create a video game. One person can create an intellectual property. When, when in like in the in the video game industry, like for example, I always like to use this example. Stardew Valley is a I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a massively popular like farming game okay. right, made by one person, and mm -hmm. it, it's one of the most popular games in the world. What is yeah. it? Where, how, how do you play it? Like it's on um. It's on Steam. Okay. Or yeah, it's for PC. Got it. Right? But just this guy just made it right. They they just don't, a farming game. Exactly. They don't necessarily have to, especially since Xbox, Microsoft themselves, they're trying to make every game that you can play on Xbox playable on PC, right? They're actively doing things that are consumer friendly. Okay. Right? And yes, I know if we give them too much power, they can shift on us, raise the prices whenever they want. But at the same time, right, you have to look at this and say, they're not really winning anything except our, 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 gratitude or their reputation really as as for for the gamers mm -hmm. as, as being the console for the gamers i can see that um and you know i uh, like i said casual 
Um, I like seeing just dope video games come out. If I don't play, I at least watch my brothers play. I watch a <laughs> watch a Twitch stream. Um, game loons on Twitch. Um, <laughs> I, I try to do something uh, to keep up to date because it's a culture I grew up in. I just yeah. um, don't heavily participate in anymore. But I I love watching it. So I mean, if this is good for gamers, I'm good for it too. Yeah. Overall, um, it's it's really great. At least in my opinion. You know, my word is not, you know, law or anything, but I think this is good for us. Okay. Cool. That's good to see. So I'm I'm happy. To, I'm I'm excited to see what happens with it. Um, and especially what games come out. Um, Me too. Um, and we're far away from E3. I know that. That's summertime. No. Um, yeah. About June and July. I don't, I don't, I think it got canceled this year. Oh, crap. Well, yeah. um, you know, hopefully we have some more gaming news to go over um, soon, but I'm excited to see what comes out. Yeah. Um, okay. I am running out of space. <laughs> I, <laughs> and, get, I think that's that we should the, wrap it up. Yeah, I think it's time to wrap it up. Well, thank you everybody for um listening into this episode of the Game Loon Saloon. A lot we covered today. Um, but we'll be back next week to talk um everything we love, um, movies, um, T V shows, video games, you name it. Yep, definitely. Thank you so much once again, Carlos. Thank and you, thank you everyone. All, All right. right. Peace.